Hi guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to take a little look at gated reverb. Um, it's an effect popularized in the 1980s with artists such as Phil Collins, uh, famously on In The Air Tonight, of course, but also other artists like Peter Gabriel and Kate Bush and Duran Duran and a whole host of others. It's a classic 80s sound, which is increasingly finding its way into contemporary productions. Basically, you take a sound, um, and quite often it's a drum sound, we're going to be using a snare today, and you apply quite a lot of reverb to it. But the trick is you put a gate across that reverb, and that gate is triggered by the snare itself. And you use the gate to set an envelope for how that reverb gets cut off. So it gets truncated almost, well, not almost, it gets truncated artificially. So you would do a send from the snare to a big bright reverb, uh, matching the tone of the reverb to the snare in some way. The reverb might need brightening up a little bit, which I'm gonna show you how to do here. Um, and then you'd set a second send from that snare to the side chain input on a gate which goes across the reverb return. Here's a demonstration. I've got a little 80s vibe going on here. Um, it's just something that I chucked together. Uh, got some 80s synth sound going on, some stuff coming out of the Juno there, a few other bits and pieces. Um, but it's got quite a dry um, drum sound. The snare is particularly dry and it's not really in keeping with the vibe of the track. Have a listen. <laughs> So there we are, we need to 80s that up a little bit. So let me show you how to do it. So on my snare channel here, I'm gonna set up a send, bus one, I'm gonna use bus one. I'm gonna select bus one there, right? And then Logic automatically creates a new channel here called aux one, which is being fed by bus one. So when I turn up my send on here, it feeds this channel. If I insert a reverb in here, which I'm gonna do, the old chroma verb there. It's the old chroma verb, it's quite new. So now the um, I'm sending from here to uh, auxiliary one and chroma verb is inserted on there. So the return from auxiliary one going to the stereo output there is going to be reverberation. Cool. So I'm just gonna turn up the decay time on that um, quite a lot. We're not gonna use all of this decay. It's just that I want it to be going on for ages so that we've got something to work with with our gate envelope. Okay, now I'm gonna brighten that up a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna go here, I'm just gonna stick the uh, channel EQ across there and just low shelf it just a little bit, just to brighten it up a bit. I'm not gonna boost it at the top. Um, it's more effective I find if I, if I low shelf it just here like that, there we go. Okay, let's take a little listen to how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some 80s stuff happening there. Okay, but we need to gate that. That's taking up too much space now. That huge long decay is taking up too much space. So let's put a gate across my return here. Noise gate, there we are. Now I need to feed the side chain of this noise gate with a hit from the snare. So I'm gonna come back to my snare channel and I'm gonna go bus send, I'm gonna go bus send 32. Um, when I'm doing uh, side chain sends, I tend to use um, the buses that are down here. It just keeps them out of the way of my time-based sends, which are up the top there. Just my workflow kind of thing. Any of these will work. <clears throat> so bus 32. Now, importantly, well, two things. Firstly, Bus 32 now, I've selected that, it's created a new auxiliary channel here, and it's put bus 32 as its feed. It sort of thinks that I'm gonna be adding another time-based effect, but I'm not. <clears throat> I'm just using this as a bus. Problem is here, is if I turn this up now to zero, zero dB on the send, signal flow-wise, I've got my snare coming through here, feeding the stereo output, and I'm also taking a send from here to another channel, which is feeding the stereo output. I've effectively doubled the amplitude of that snare, which is not what I want at all. So one thing I could do is I could just remove it from the stereo output, 
But better still, if I just go to my mixer page and find auxiliary four, there, like that, it's largely redundant, so I can just go edit and delete. Delete anyway. Now, I don't know if you can see that, very slight bug in Logic, in, in this particular version of Logic. Uh, that should have gone there now, that should say, um, that shouldn't say AUX4 there because I've literally just deleted it. In fact, if I go back here to my snare channel and select my AUX1 send, yeah, it's definitely gone. Okay, that's cool. Now, second thing, I said there was two things when setting up this sidechain input. Um, this needs to be a pre-fade send. The reason being, if I wanted to turn down, for whatever reason, when I'm mixing, if I wanted to turn my snare down, I don't want for that send going to that sidechain input to be turned down with it. I need that to be at full at full whack so that the uh, the envelope on the noise gate runs in exactly the same way, uh, regardless of how loud the snare is. So I'm going to just change that now to pre-fade. Now it doesn't matter where my snare fader is, the gate will still be acting in the same way because it will be taking a pre-fade send from that snare at the same level all the time. Okay, so now I'm just going to raise the threshold, uh, just drop it to about minus eight there. Get rid of the mixer. That's interesting, isn't it? When I set this to pre-fade, it created me another AUX4. Why would it do that? I don't know why they call this program logic sometimes. That defies logic to me. I'm going to delete that again. Okay, spot the deliberate mistake. What haven't I done? Look, side chain. I haven't set that to bus 32. That needs to be set to bus 32. Otherwise, where's it going to take its feed from? There we are, bus 32. So we'll just need to make sure that that is truncating. Yeah, let's dial in some hold time. should be able to reduce um, the level of the snare without it having an effect on the uh, side chain. Here we are, so that's why we use that pre-fade. So that's it in a nutshell. Now you can craft this for your own aesthetic taste, but basically that's how you do gated reverb. Quick recap on the signal flow. Snare, send to a reverb. I've brightened up that reverb a little bit. Put a noise gate across that return. And on that noise gate, select a bus and send to that bus from the snare and make sure that's pre-fade. Then craft your envelope and away you go. Gated reverb. Guys, if this has been useful to you, don't forget to subscribe and I shall look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye.